So the update 21 in Bloom's 6 finally arrived and I'm super excited to talk to you guys about this one because it brings a lot of new content to it but also some changes in terms of towers, prices and cross paths that you guys might find interesting. As usual there's a new map, no new skin this time around, a lot of new trophy store items, a new hidden achievement and a bunch of gameplay changes. So before we move on make sure to leave a thumbs up on the video and subscribe if you're new here. I will be uploading videos on the latest hidden achievement, a chimps guide for the latest map called encrypted and some interesting videos that you guys will like. So starting off let's talk about the new map called encrypted. It's an intermediate map with two entrances and two exits and the name and the overall look of the map just scream that there's something hidden on it. The most curious part is the middle one which looks like some ritual place where we sacrifice towers or something and if we remove all four of these obstacles um, they will reveal symbols in different colors. So these symbols represent the different monkey types so for example the blue one refers to the primary monkeys uh, the purple one is the magic monkeys, the green one is the military monkeys and then the brown or orange one represents the support monkeys. Furthermore, you can't buy other tower types on symbols that don't represent the specific type, meaning we cannot buy a primary tower on the purple or the brown spot for example. These symbols might refer to specific towers and I also noticed that they might even refer to specific paths the middle path of each tower to be precise. For example the blue one which refers to primary towers has a dart on it which might mean that we need to buy a dart monkey on that location and it's very similar to the middle path upgrade the quick shots on the dart monkey. The purple one which has a wand on it might mean that we need to get a wizard on there, well it probably does and it's very similar to the wand that is being held by the 5th tier wizard lord phoenix. The brown one has two gears on it and this one is very similar again to the middle path upgrade of the spike factor which is the faster production upgrade. And then the military is divided into two parts into a water and a land part which if I had to guess they look something like maybe the sub commander or the sniper. Well the land part is actually the sniper because nothing else fits but both the buccaneer and the sub fit onto the water part. And also the center part of this whole thingy has a banana on it and I tried and the banana farm does not fit inside and the statue that is in front of everything looks like a Dora. So again I'm not sure what needs to be done here, tell me what you guys think down below about this whole thing but whatever it is I bet it's gonna be cool when we finally figure it out. Okay enough about the map, let's talk about the new limited edition trophy store items that we get. There are a total of 9 limited edition items that cost 220 trophies, so even if you have 0 right now, you should be able to get almost everything if you beat all of the next 3 odysseys on hard mode, which I'm going to be doing guides on by the way, so now is a great time to subscribe if you haven't, and maybe finish a couple of races in the top 10%. Alright, so I bought all of the limited edition items and let's look through them. First off, we have the monkey ace bone darts, which changes the appearance of the projectiles that come out of the monkey ace, so instead of darts, he's shooting kind of these little bones. We have the bones pop sound and kind of bones flying around when a bloom pops. We have the hatchet blooms, which is kind of the most obvious ones, which makes all of the blooms spawn with a hatchet on them. Uh, we have the first ever powers cosmetic, which is a coffin drop, which uh, changes the cash drop power, which looks very cool by the way, look at this one. Yeah, that's amazing. We have the, the farm candy corns which makes the banana farms drop candy corn instead of normal bananas. Uh, we have the bomb shooter which uh, shoots bomb pumpkins and uh, my saved my favorite one for last and that is the grim farmer. Now look at this guy. He's amazing. I love this one. So overall this is very cool and if you guys like these ones make sure to start saving up trophies. Again, if you have zero right now you will be able to get most of them by the time they expire. A lot of quality of life improvements have been made which I'm not gonna go over all of them but just to name a few we can now search in the achievements menu. Uh, hidden achievements now appear in the achievements menu but with their title and description hidden until it gets earned. We can now loop the current track in the jukebox and a ton of fixes to the game which should make it run smoother and overall just better. 
Now finally onto the balance changes. Now there are a lot of balance changes and Ninja Kiwi even dropped explanations on why they made each one of them. I'm gonna drop the link to their reddit post down in the description and in the pinned comments so you guys can check them all out. But I'm gonna make this part of the video short and just talk about the things I feel like are going to have the most impact to the game. Now following the trend of making cross paths buff each other, this upgrade brings even more functionality to cross paths on different towers making for some interesting niche upgrades. The two most important changes of this update in my opinion are the wizard and the engineer. So first off the wizard. Uh, he got his price reduced from 450 to 400 dollars which um, comes out to be 430 on hard mode and he got its pierce increase from 2 to 3. So now on hard mode and in chimps mode this wizard costs 430 dollars. So why is this important? Well this means that now we might be seeing a lot of chimp starts with a wizard and a dart monkey instead of the usual uh, you know, triple darts or maybe dart sub starts. Another cross path that got insanely buffed is the Prince of Darkness. This guy is crazy right now. So the way that he works is that his other attacks get buffed from the number of souls that he has in his graveyard. The maximum capacity is 3000. So let me just quickly show you guys what this guy can do versus round 98 for example. By the way, the super monkey is here because um, we need to get some souls going into his graveyard and he's not able to do that. But in a normal game you are going to have some other towers that are going to do some initial pops and then this guy is going to skyrocket. There we go. So we have 3000 souls and just look at him go. Look at those pops. This is by the way a $30,000 tower. Well, it's a 30... I think it's like 32, 33k or something like that, but this is just an insane amount of pops. And by the way, his number of souls in the graveyard is like about 2, oh, going up, 2.3, 2.2k. So if you manage to keep this number to 3000, which you definitely will be when you, you know, in your normal games when you have other towers popping the balloons, this guy is just going to input an insane amount of damage. He's super cool right now and expect a lot of... Uh, new two tower chimps and three tower chimp strategies to be done with him. I also mentioned the engineer and the biggest change to the engineer is that the overclock's duration is no longer based on the amount of money spent on the tower but rather the tier of the tower. So a tier 3 tower for example is still going to have 100% uptime on the overclock but a tier 4 tower is only going to have 75% uptime and a tier 5 tower is going to have 50% uptime. So this should be the end of permaspike strategies. It held on for so long after a lot of nerves, but I feel like after this update the permaspike is gone. Towers that might be interesting to try out are the 003 Moab Shaf Heli, which got an insane 30% price reduction. They keep buffing this cross pad for I think 3 patches in a row now, and they're making it cheaper and better every single time. And also the alchemist got another nerf having the acid pool and faster throwing upgrades swapped around. But the stronger stimulant and faster throwing got a price increase. So this means that the total amount of money spent to get a 401 alchemist is now a bit higher than before. So that is it for this update 21 in BTD6. Tell me below what you guys think about it and I'll see you guys in the next one.